Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is August 21st, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I'm gonna provide you with an update of the present fire situation for the US West to include an overview of how air quality across the North American West and in particular the US Northwest has greatly declined as a result of the climate change enhanced wildfires that are presently burning across the US West and into British Columbia. Now this picture taken on August 19th is a Sentinel satellite shot that has been provided by Zachary Labe of wildfire smoke burning deep in the valleys of southern British Columbia from fires burning in these valleys. And as you can see, the, the smoke is, is cleaned to low-lying areas, and, and we have numerous reports of, of difficulty breathing from people living in the West and just general issues with the air quality situation. Now, looking at the satellite shot, we see numerous hot spots across the U.S. West in association with large clouds of smoke over much of the region. It's worth noting that these clouds now extend across much of North America into the Atlantic Ocean region, have crossed parts of Europe and, and parts of Asia as well. And it's likely that smoke from these fires will circulate the globe. Speaking to the point of some of the reports of people having difficulty breathing out west, Zero Hour notes that these images perfectly capture what the Pacific Northwest is suffering through. Smoke from climate-caused wildfires is filling our lungs. We can't breathe. This is what climate change looks like. People can't breathe. This isn't normal. Don't let them tell us it is. And here's a picture of someone using a filtration mask to help cope with the poor air quality and a photograph of, of a road covered by smoke. Recent reports from Vox note that breathing Seattle's air right now is like smoking seven cigarettes, blame the wildfires. And as you can see from this satellite shot in the Vox article, which I recommend you read, the smoke from fires is quite dense. This graphic of smoke extent from U.S. wildfires and British Columbia wildfires provides us with an idea of how extensive the smoke is now with very dense smoke across the U.S. West stretching into the central U.S. and continuing on across the U.S. East, the Canadian East, and then transferring off the map into the Atlantic Ocean. It's worth noting that this map shows hotspots just for the lower 48 states, not including the British Columbia region, which presently, according to recent reports, has hundreds of active fires now burning. The largest fire in the U.S. right now is the Mendocino Fire, at 404,532 acres. The Mendocino fire is now the largest California wildfire on record by a considerable amount. It's also worth noting that human forced climate change has increased the length of the Western wildfire season by 105 days, such that in some regions, wildfire season never really ends. And large wildfires currently burning in the lower 48 are, are about 98. Now, looking at the National Interagency Fire Center, we find that total fires active throughout both the lower 48 and Alaska are now 111. These are active large fires. They do not include small fires or just hot spots, but large fires. Total acres active from fires now exceeds 2 million with 2 million 43,114 acres now involved, and the present wildfire season for the U.S. is fourth worst in the last 10 years, which includes a number of the worst fire seasons on record since accurate record keeping of acreage coverage for the U.S. began in the 1970s. 
It's worth noting that progress has been made in California where the Mendocino complex fire is now 79% contained and the car fire is now 88% contained. So some good news for California as firefighters have made progress, but unfortunately, at least for California, dry weather is expected to continue, although temperatures may cool off over the coming days. It's worth noting that recent large fire outbreaks have occurred in Idaho, Montana, Washington, and Oregon with three new fires today, new large, new large fires today in Oregon, and 10 large fires now active across Washington. It's not typical that you see large fires in Washington and Oregon due to the fact that the climate there tends to be much wetter, but during recent years, warm, dry air has invaded Washington and Oregon, spiking wildfire potential in these typically less vulnerable zones. During the past week, very warm temperatures in the 90 to, in some cases, 100 degree range have invaded the parts of the U.S. Northwest, which has spiked wildfire danger in this region. Presently, we see a high amplitude jet stream wave, which is enhancing heat across the Western North America zone, particularly in the Northwest and British Columbia. And this ridge has been persistent for the, the well, for, for, for many weeks now, with the amplitude increasing toward the Arctic. Now, it's worth noting that above normal sea surface temperatures in the northeastern Pacific and lower than normal sea ice levels in the Arctic have tended to help enhance this ridge pattern, which has drawn much warmer than typical temperatures into the U.S. West and into British Columbia, as well as into Alaska. Both the sea ice loss and the warmer than normal sea surface temperatures in the Northeast Pacific are fingerprints of human-caused climate change, and these two influences have increased fire danger across the U.S. West, as well as the Canadian West and Alaska during this year. So this is a bit of a climate change signal. Now, it's worth noting that over the coming days, where we expect to see the jet stream pattern change with the western ridge shifting more toward Alaska. And note the large ridge pattern here, bulging into Alaska with a dip running, starting to run into the northwest, and with a facing ridge starting to bow out over the U.S. east. This dip in the jet stream is expected to bring some cooler temperatures to the northwest, as well as the potential for rain as storms cycle down through the trough. It's worth noting that unfortunately, California is not expected to see much relief, at least in the form of precipitation remaining dry, but, but temperatures might cool down a bit as, as the trough does run in through the west. So a potential for a bit of relief for the west, thankfully, but I wouldn't say that it, is, that it represents major relief, although firefighters will likely have a chance to gain ground against the severe fires that are now burning. So an overall update of the fire situation for the U.S. West, it's worth reiterating that the present fire situation does show a number of human-caused climate change fingerprints and that the severe reduction in air quality as a result of these fires is also an issue related to human-caused climate change. So thank you for joining me, and I'll be chatting with you soon.